So method point one is to weigh out approximately six grams of salicylic acid, that's this stuff, directly into a 250 centimetre cube conical flask. Um, so I've put the flask onto the balance pressed hair. I'm still going to remove that from the balance to add or remove any of this powder so that if I spill some, it doesn't contribute to the mass. So I'll just add a couple of spatula loads and see what that looks like on the balance. That mass is 2.40 grams. So I need about six grams, so another, let's go with one, two, three, let's have a look at what that looks like, 5.86, let's go for a little bit more, something like that. There we have 6.24 grams, I'll just put this bit out of the way. Okay, next method point then is to put this inside a one decimeter cubed beaker filled uh, to 600 centimeters cubed with hot water from the tap and I'm just checking that that's not got too hot, that's great. So I put that stirring rod down and I'm just gonna sit that in there actually because that way I find it a bit easier to swirl it. Um, using the 10 centimeters cubed measuring cylinder, add approximately eight centimeters cubed of ethanolic and hydride to the flask and sort the contents out. I've already measured this out with a few of those fans on. So that's now measured out, so I'm going to just pop this um, in here. We should probably notice that in the information, it says to do this stuff in the fume cupboard. And the difficulty with that is that you wouldn't be able to see it on the video clip. So rather than using the fume cupboard, I've got the room really well ventilated, and I've used the fume cupboard for the slightly more hazardous um, bits of the method already, so that we're ready to go. So I'm satisfied that it's safe to do it on the bench like this. And giving that a little swirl, it says, swirl the contents. Just pop that in there nice and carefully and giving it a good swirl. Now the next method step is up at approximately, I'm just gonna guess this, one centimeters cubed of concentrated sulfuric acid to this flask dropwise and swirl the mixture for a few minutes to ensure thorough mixing. So I've got the concentrated sulfuric acid here. Notice I've got the goggles on and gloves on because I'm handling the concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, so let's go. One. Okay, I'll just give that a good swirl and then I'll add a bit more because I think that was probably something closer to half a centimetre cube would be my guess on that. Let's get that nice and warm again and let's add another similar quantity, just drop by drop, giving it a bit of a swirl in between. There we go. And again, I'll take that out briefly, give it a good old swirl round and just sit it in that warm water bath. I'll just get a piece of tissue to mop up that water. Okay, it says next, if the solid does not dissolve, increase the water temperature. Well, the solid looks to me as if it has dissolved nicely. I'll just get that sulfuric acid out of the way. That's dissolved nicely like so. Um, and so I can move on to the next method point then. So the next method point is allow the flask to cool by removing it from the water bath and run, running cold water around the outside of the flask. So I'll take this, just give it one more swirl, just for good measure, checking that we've got all of those reactants in the bottom of that. So take this out and then I'm going to just allow it to cool a little bit to room temperature and then run that cold water. Notice I'm being careful not to allow the water to go inside the flask here. Just using this to cool the flask contents rather than actually getting involved in the reaction in any way. Okay, next 
method step says once cool, add 25 centimeters cubed of cold distilled water and at that stage the aspirin should precipitate out. So you can perhaps see around the edges of the flask that there is some solids and crystals starting to form in here. Nevertheless, I'll add 25 centimeters cubed of the water to try to help that to crystallize out, precipitate out really. Uh, and there we have it, some of that product precipitated out in that cold water bath. Now, that needs to just sit uh, for a few moments whilst I get the next bit ready. So the next bit for this experiment is the apparatus that's going to be used to separate that solid, which is the product that we're interested in, uh, from the remaining solution that we've got in the flask. And to do that, I'm going to do something called filtering under reduced pressure. So to do that, uh, this is the filter funnel. You can perhaps see, if I take the top off it, actually, you can perhaps see it even better. Um, there's a, a funnel, just a container there, just with some perforated holes in the bottom of it, like so. And then the rest of the funnel sits like that. This goes into a flask uh, where there's a seal on, on this side and then a side arm here. So this is called a Buckner flask or a side arm flask. And this is called a Buckner funnel. I'll take that and just using a normal uh, clamping stand, I'll just clamp that nice and carefully. I just move the clamp down a little bit so that it fits properly around the neck of this flask. I'm going to clamp that nice and securely, just like so, so that it doesn't fall over when we're using it. Now, this side here, what we use at this side here is a, a vacuum apparatus. And the vacuum apparatus works like this. So here I've got um, a fitting which goes on the tap. And if you imagine water whooshes straight down this fitting into the drain, which then drags air from behind it. So if this part is attached onto the side of the flask, then this whole apparatus will cause air to come through the top, through here, and generate a little bit of a vacuum in here. So that's the idea. So this is called filtering under reduced pressure. Let's pop that onto the tap like so. As with all glassware and tubing, Hold and support the tubing. I'm going to take that off actually because it's easier to do that uh, when it's not clamped like so. So hold and support the glassware nice and close to the tubing and very carefully pop that on and then pop it back like that and sit that funnel on top. What's missing so far is some filter paper. So we have some specially sized filter paper which looks like this. So just a little disc that fits in the top. I'm going to use a double layer actually because this um, sometimes has such fine crystals that you can lose some of the crystals through the single layer. Uh, and I'll just dampen that, that filter paper. I can use water for this because we've just added water so we know that that's safe to do with these reactants. So turn on the tap like so and perhaps here the suction at this side if I just put a little bit of water just to dampen that filter paper like so what you start to see is the water coming through the bottom. Now let's try it with the contents of the flask. So I'm going to give it a really good swirl, like so, and pour that contents of the flask straight in, like that. And actually you can see that we are losing some of those very small crystals uh, down here as part of the filter. But there's not a lot we can do about that, it's just part of the limitations of the experiment. You might want to think about what happens to the yield as a consequence. Take a bit more of this water give that another swirl around and try to wash out as much of this product as you can into here again like so uh, and once again just try and just maximize the amount of that product that ends up where we'd like it to be which is on this filter paper like that and i'm just going to give that a little rinse off with some of that distilled water as well just to remove any solution contaminants that might still be there. Okay that's part one that's the aspirin preparation. The aspirin in the top here separated from the rest of the substances from the reaction.